I am not saying that the Buffalo Sabres are going to be a top contender or even a contender in four years, but I'm not saying that they're not. Hey everyone, welcome to Post to Post, and my name is Neil. Thanks for joining me today. I promise this isn't a Buffalo Sabres channel. I just enjoyed talking about the Buffalo Sabres recently. So last week we talked about the Buffalo Sabres, and uh, I was pretty active in the past week talking about the Buffalo Sabres on Twitter, and uh, here I am making another video on the Buffalo Sabres. I just find their whole scenario and situation extremely interesting, and I guess that's probably not typical. You don't look at a team that's on a 15-game losing streak, potentially on their way to breaking the 18-game losing streak record in the NHL held by the Pittsburgh Penguins, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, this isn't really something that someone typically gets interested in. They get interested in a team on a winning streak or something amazing happened, not when something terrible happens. But I just, I don't know. I just, it's almost like watching a car accident. I, I almost can't look away. I want to learn more. I want to dive more into the team and, and just kind of think about, okay, what the hell can they do to fix this thing? Uh, so here I am. I wanted to look back on a team that is probably one of the worst, if not the worst, NHL, NHL teams I have ever seen in my entire life. And that is the 2016-2017 Colorado Avalanche. That team was terrible. It was an god-awful team. It was There was almost no redeeming qualities of that team. But there... <laughs> that was only four years ago, okay? That was only four years ago, and look at the Colorado Avalanche now. I want to take the stats from that team in 2016-2017, the Colorado Avalanche, and compare them to the Buffalo Sabres now. Because when I look at the Buffalo Sabres team now, it reminds me a lot of that team. Obviously, that's not a compliment, but there's a bit of a saving grace at the end of the video as after we go through the stats, and I promise there is, so stick with me. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button down below. Okay, so I'm going to throw all the stats up on the screen here. Let's just break them down, okay, a little bit. And some of these stats don't match up equally because this is a shortened season and, you know, the season's only, uh, Buffalo's played 31 games so far this season and uh, the Colorado Avalanche played 82 in that season. So obviously there's some discrepancies here, but just stick with me. We'll go through it. So 82 games played for Colorado. So far, 31 for Buffalo. Colorado had 22 wins. They only had 22 wins that season. So far, Buffalo has six. That's a big yikes. Uh, Colorado had 56 losses that season. Buffalo has 21 already. So if we look at the winning percentage, in that season, Colorado was a point, uh, 0.293, which is terrible. Buffalo currently, and I know there's a game on, There's a, by the time this releases, they're probably going to be playing. And by the way, uh, their interim head coach and assistant coach are not there tonight. Kevin Adams, their GM, is coaching them behind the bench tonight. You should watch this game if you can. Uh, Buffalo, so far this year, is 0.258. <laughs> it's, that is so bad. I don't remember a team being this bad uh, or having a, a winning percentage this low at this point in the season or any point in the season other than the first five games or whatever. It's... <laughs> It's so bad. Anyways, uh, OT, uh, so Colorado have four, and Buffalo has four, so I guess they're even there. Goals for Colorado had 166, uh, Buffalo is 66, so Colorado scored 100 more goals. Obviously, this stat doesn't really matter because of the games played. Uh, goals against, 278 goals against for the Colorado Avalanche, and 111 so far for the Buffalo Sabres. Again, doesn't matter. Goal differential, minus 122 for Colorado, minus 45 for Buffalo. Again, doesn't matter, but this next one does. Uh, goals for per game by the Colorado Avalanche in that season were 2.01. Goals for for the Buffalo Sabres so far this year is 2.06. Hey, Buffalo came out on top there. Goals against, 3.37 goals against per game for the Colorado Ava Avalanche in that season. So far for the Buffalo Sabres, 3.52 goals against per game. Uh, that's a thumbs down for Buffalo so far. Power play percentage, and this is this is the weird part about this. These teams are so close in a lot of these stats, um, but this is a big discrepancy. Uh, on the power play, Colorado was 12.6%, uh, but Buffalo this year is 24.1%, if I'm not mistaken, which is incredible. Uh, the, on the PK, Colorado was 76 .6, and Buffalo is, is currently 77.9%. So those ones are, are close, but the power play is just crazy different. Shots for per game by Colorado was 28.1. 
shots for for Buffalo this so, this year so far, 27.6. So Buffalo, obviously not good, but, you know, they're similar. Shots against, 31.7 for Colorado, 31.6 for Buffalo so far, pretty much even. So, and a couple of those stats, they're pretty close. A couple of them are, you know, there's pretty big discrepancies. But they they remind me so much of, of, of one another, and... That's not a compliment, like I said at the beginning, and I'm, I'm not trying to bag on but the Buffalo Sabres. I think there's, I think you can look at this Colorado team from 2016-2017 and see, okay, well, how did they come out of this? Who was on the team that year? Who is still on the team right now? Four years later, moving into year five, I guess. Uh, what, what, are the, what are the pieces that remained from that? And I went through the roster of that Colorado team. 37 players played for that team that year. Only six, okay, only six from four years ago, that Colorado team, only six are currently on the roster, which is, I I thought it would be a lot more, to be honest. It's only four years, but there's been huge turnover. I'm not going to tell you the six, okay? I'm going to turn this into a bit of a trivia. If you can guess the six and don't cheat, try and guess the six down below in the comment section. Leave it right now. Try and guess those six players who were on that 2016-2017 Colorado team who are currently still on the team. Three of them are going to be very easy. That's a hint. Now, I also looked at the coach and the GM of the Colorado Avalanche team. And it might surprise you a little bit. Because as bad as that team is, or was, and it was bad, Jared Bednar was the coach. Joe Sackick was the GM. Think about that. Their current coach and current GM... Are, are are were the the coach and GM back then during that terrible season that absolutely terrible season they turned it around they they took the time they trusted their system Joe Sakic looked at Jared Bednar he said I trust in you I trust your system let's let's fix this let's build this so Buffalo can look at that and think okay this isn't necessarily about a, a specific system or players on the roster because I guess I don't want to reveal who the players were, but some of the players on Colorado are very similar to some of the players on Buffalo. Buffalo right now has Jack Eichel, a couple of other assets, but you look at that and you think, okay, if they can do it, we kind of have kind of the same makeup. Maybe we can also do it maybe in four years. Listen, I'm not saying that the Buffalo Sabres are going to win the cup in four years or even be a contender. Right now, Colorado is a contender, and they're a top contender. I am not saying that the Buffalo Sabres are going to be a top contender or even a contender in four years, but I'm not saying that they're not. I think they can learn from it. And it, to me, it's not really about the system. It's not really about the roster specifically. It's about having the right people in the right places above the players. Bring in a right coach. Uh, bring in GM, who... I'm, I'm not going to say that Kevin Adams isn't the right GM. I, I'm just saying that... You have to make right decisions for the people who lead the team from above. And if you bring those people in, if you if you do things right from above and it trickles down, you will see success. And right now, Buffalo is suffering from um, a monster at the top. And that, that culture just seems to, to come all the way down to the players. So that's the problem for me. But there's, there's hope at the end of the tunnel. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that the Buffalo Sabres can look at that team, that Colorado team from that year... And, and take some, just, I don't know, take some some lessons that, that that team learned and look at what they did in the, in the past four years and look at where they are now and use that as inspiration. So, yeah, things suck in Buffalo right now. They are terrible. They've probably never been worse. But in 2016, 2017 for the Colorado Avalanche, I mean, that was a, that was a bad year. And they came out of it. So I'm thinking that maybe... The Buffalo Sabres do have a chance, not as good as a chance, but they do have a chance to turn it around and actually be potentially a competitive team in three or four years. But they have to make the right decisions now. This isn't a long process. You have to make the right decisions now. And by now, I mean after this season. In the offseason, just either blow it up or bring in the right people or make smart moves now for your future. Because this... I almost swore. This... um in between stuff and band-aids and all like it's not working okay so this has to whatever change they make this year has to be the final change it has to be drastic and it has to be planned 
and and thought out and methodical and they need to make the right decision now because the Buffalo Sabres fans can't go through another four years of of mediocre play of subpar play disappointment and and losing streaks like this 15 games so uh, I'm, I'm gonna sign off now because I need to edit this and get it out before the game or at least during the game and I also want to watch the game because see if that 15 turns into 16 or if the clock gets reset and uh, Buffalo can finally get that monkey off their back. Uh, regardless, and, and it's an interesting team. I'm very interested in the Buffalo Sabres this year, and I genuinely hope that they... I, like, I'm not a Sabres fan. I love Sabres fans. If you're a Sabres fan, I love you. I think you're one of the best fan bases in the league, if not the best. I wish your team well. I'm not necessarily cheering for them as far as, you know... I, I, I am kind of cheering for them to win and get, and get out of it, but... Uh, I, I want to see them do good, but I don't. I'm not going to get all excited if they make the playoffs and win the Stanley Cup or anything like that. That would be great if they did. But I'm I'm more cheering for the for the Buffalo Sabers fans. I'm cheering for you guys. So I'm interested in the Buffalo Sabers. I'm very interested, and I I've probably watched outside of Montreal. I've watched a lot of uh, Minnesota. I, I've actually watched a lot of LA, and um, uh, and Buffalo is right up there as well, which is. You know, they don't fit with, with those other teams, but um, they're interesting. So thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. We'd love it if you could hit the subscribe button down below. Join me here for hockey conversations like this, looking at stats, and then the creative side as well, looking at jersey concepts, logos, um, all that fun stuff. So hope you guys have an amazing day. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Adios. Wow.